What's up guys, Yugi Bros here bringing you what I'm calling the cookie cutter segment. Uh, what we're going to do with these videos is we're going to try to get you guys into speed if you're not playing speed duels already uh, and get you on specific decks. And how we're going to do this is we're going to base it basically off a uh, range of competitiveness, so how consistent the deck is and the matchups it has in the current format, and the affordability, so how much you have to spend in order to pick up said deck. Uh, today's video is on Amazonas, and this deck is by far the most competitive deck in the game currently, and probably, to a lesser extent, the most affordable. You don't really have to go too far in depth to pick up everything for this deck. Uh, starting off with main deck monsters, Amazonas Swordswoman is your solid, uh, quote unquote, boss monster of the deck. Uh, whatever battle damage you would take, your opponent takes instead. And this is obviously really crucial against big decks like Blue Eyes White Dragon, like they're just going to take all the damage. Uh, follow that with Amazonas Sage when she attacks and is still alive at the end of the damage step. It pops a spell to trap your opponent controls. And spell and trap destruction right now is really big in the game considering we don't have cards like MST uh, to just do it for us. So having an in deck option is very powerful. Uh, Amazonas Chain Master. If she's destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, you can pay 1500 life points to look at your opponent's hand and add one monster from their hand to your hand. Uh, this can be really crucial in mirror matches, or in matchups where uh, Sphere Karibo is pretty prevalent, so you could just take it out of their hand. Uh, 1500, however, in 4000 Yu-Gi-Oh! is really extreme, so depending on when and where you want to use this card is very critical. Uh, then we have Amazonas Spy. You can reveal an Amazonas monster in your hand and special summoner from the hand. That's pretty cute, just for extra damage. Um, you can only use that effect once per turn. Also, when this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the grave, you can target an Amazonas monster in your graveyard except Spy and add her back to your hand or shuffle her back into the deck. Uh, most of the time you're just going to add it to the hand because it's extra free hand advantage. Um, but this is cute for getting back things like Sage and Swordswoman in late game to either do more damage to them or pop spell or traps they control. Uh, next is Amazonas Village. This is your field spell. It gives all Amazonas monsters 200 attack. Uh, once per turn, when an Amazonas monster is destroyed by battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, can be either you or your opponent, you can special summon an Amazonas monster from your deck with a level less than or equal to the Amazonas monster in the graveyard. This is basically your consistency. Uh, this is something you are 100% playing in the deck. It's just making sure that you always get uh, more free Amazons. And it's really crucial if you want to do more damage, like with Swordswoman, where you have a Swordswoman crash something, they take the damage, then you summon another Swordswoman, they can do that again, or just wall up uh, so that you're never running out of monsters. The equip spell, Amazonist Heirloom. Uh, you equip it to an Amazonist monster, and once per turn, that monster cannot be destroyed by battle. This is really good, again, with something like uh, Swordswoman for doing damage, but also keeping it there for its presence to just be more annoying to your opponent, and Sage because it's not gonna die by the battle you're attacking with it, and then you can pop a spell or trap. Uh, but it's Heirloom's most important effect is after damage calculation, if the equipped monster attacks a monster, you can destroy the attacked monster. So not only can you do more damage to something like Blue Eyes with Swordswoman equipped to this, but you can then pop the Blue Eyes after the fact, which makes it a lot easier to get rid of things. This card also doesn't target, which is really important, especially if they have Lord of D on the field. So just all the more reason to play this card in your deck. Uh, next, we have Half Shut. This targets a face-up monster in the field. It cannot be destroyed but battle this turn, and also its attack is halved until the end of the turn. Uh, this kind of just plays off of what Heirloom does to a bit of a different type. It's a quick play, so you can use it in your opponent's turn to save something, but also if they attack something like Swordswoman, and you flip this, you're gonna lose attack on your Swordswoman, but because it does all the battle damage to your opponent, they're gonna take more damage in the long run. So this is very cute to keep your cards alive, especially if you don't have the village or they found a way to get rid of it, or the heirloom, and also make it so that you can keep your board presence with your monsters, and then again with like Sage, if you're gonna attack just to pop a spell or trap and you want her to survive the battle, you can flip this and or activate this and do that. Uh, we have Sphere Karibo over here in the traps because this basically is a hand trap. Uh, if your opponent declares an attack, you can send this card from your hand to the grave to change the attacking monster to defense. Uh, it also does stuff with rituals, uh, but we're not going to get into that in this video since this deck doesn't play rituals. This is really cute. It's the only hand trap in the game currently, and it can catch a lot of people off guard if they're not expecting it or they haven't seen you play it thus far. Uh, switching something to defense to make sure uh, you can live through something or you can just wall to make sure you're not losing advantage. Windstorm of Otakwa is a trap that since changes the battle positions of all face-up monsters your opponent controls. 
similar but more effective in most situations where it can hit everything. However, if your opponent is playing around this, as they probably should be, and it's something like Blue Eyes, for example, they'll summon multiple monsters. Uh, they're likely to put one monster in defense mode to counter this, so that even when you flip this, one thing has to go back to attack mode. That's the only downside of this card. Uh, and then finally, we have Kunai with Chain. You can activate one or both of these effects simultaneously. When an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can target the attacking monster, change that target to defense, and you can target one face-up monster you control, equip it with this, it gives 500 attack. Uh, so, multi-purposed, what's really cool with this card is, in addition to also being another defensive card, uh, pumping up your, some let's say Sage, for example, is really crucial, uh, especially in the mirror match. Sage wins the mirror match, hands down, and if she can always stay on the field and keep popping Spoiler Traps your opponent controls, while being the highest attack monster on the field, being at 1900, which is usually the highest attack, or 21 or 23, depending on if one or two villages are also on the field, that's that can just sway the entire tide of the game. Uh, the downside of Kunai is that it targets, so against something like Blue Eyes, it's not as effective. Now that I've gone through specific card choices, I'm going to give you numbers. With Swordswoman, you're 100% going to want to play three of this card. Uh, this is by far the backbone of the entire deck. They take damage every time you would take damage. You can basically loop this for eternity if you're playing cards to get it back from the grave like Spy. This card is definitely the best card in the deck overall, however Sage currently deals with the format better, but that's mostly because it's a mirror match. Sage, on the same note, currently in this format, you're going to 100% want to play three of this card. Popping a Speller Trap on the field is very critical currently, and can usually sway the tide of the game. Chainmaster is usually just more bulk in the deck, more attack, more gives you more floating options, so I would definitely at least play one to two of this card. I think three is overdoing it. I definitely don't think you need more than that. You don't want to open with too many monsters. Spy is an interesting option. This is something where I would say it's zero to one. You don't have to play it. I currently don't, but it can be critical in specific matchups, usually the mirror match. Village is a card I would definitely play two to three of. I only say two because you don't want to brick by opening multiple copies of this card, but this card is the consistency of the deck, so the longer it stays on the field, the more powerful your deck is. Heirloom is a card I definitely play three of as well. This is something that gives you way too much advantage by popping something, but also allowing your monsters to stay alive by battle. Half Shot, in my opinion, is a card you play two to three of mandatory, but I've seen people not play this card. I think it's too good for the deck not to play it at least as a two of. But I can understand people playing one of it. I just definitely wouldn't play zero. This card is too critical. It can just steal games for free, especially if they're not expecting it. I just don't see a reason I'll play less than two to three of this card. Sphere Karibo is an interesting choice. Sphere, Windstorm, and Kunai are all options that you can mess around with. I think Windstorm is 100% the three of choice that you need to play in the deck. Sphere and Kunai can actually be subbed out for one another. Sphere switching something to defense mode doesn't target, so against blue eyes that's really critical. However, Kunai gives the deck the mirror match advantage, where not only switching something to defense is relevant, but pumping something by 500 can honestly turn the entire game around. If you're going for budget, you're not going to play Sphere, you'll play Kunai. If you really think you need the Sphere to stall more appropriately against non-targetable things, then you're going to go Sphere. So let's talk budget. Uh, everything in this deck that isn't Spear Karibo, Half Shut, or Amazonist Spy is actually in the Kaiba deck, the one with Kaiba on the cover. It's called Starter Deck Duelists of Tomorrow. Uh, contains all of Mai's cards, which are Amazons, all of Kaiba's cards, which is Blue Eyes and such, and Joey's cards. And I believe in the Joey deck, if I'm not mistaken, he contains Kunai with Chain. So... Everything else that's not Kunai with Chain out of those decks out of and outside of the cards I just mentioned are all in this deck. So building an Amazonist deck essentially takes $30 uh, before side deck uh, and if you wanted to play Sphere Karibo. On the note of Sphere Karibo, Sphere Karibo is currently the most expensive card in Speed Duel, sitting around $15. You could pick this up, but like I said, I think Kunai is just better for the mirror right now. So why not have the cheaper version of the card that you get in the deck and still only spend $30. Uh, side deck, the only time I would assume that would cost more is if you want something outside of the realm like Twister or Mijizuri or something. And those are currently about 5 to $7 each out of Arena. But if you're just sticking uh, purely main deck and you're not worried too, too much about the side, again, you can replace Twister with something like the Spell. You can place Mijizuri with Ryoku. Uh, those options are very cheap as well. Um, but basically, this deck costs nothing, and it is the best deck. $30 gets you this. You just buy three Kaiba decks, and you have it. 
Pick up half shuts for the five cents that they're worth out of Arena. Pick up Amazon a Spy if you plan to play that for the five cents that it's worth out of Arena. And if you feel the need to play Sphere Karibo, then go right ahead. Otherwise, flip it with Q and I with Chain, and you will not be disappointed. So that's my first cookie cutter build, guys. Tell me what you think. Tell me if I need to change anything. Uh, I wanted to give cookie cutters. I want to do this like once a week with speed decks, at least, just to give you like the general what you want to play in the deck. Uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe as always, as well as hit that notification bell. It's very annoying, I know. Uh, but if you hit that, you'll get all of my updates as fast as possible. So I appreciate that. But outside of that, guys, this is Yugi Bros signing out for now. Uh, expect an update by either end of this week or early next week on our actual video schedule, as well as our Patreon that we plan to bring you guys as early as next week as well. So that's Yugi Bros signing out.